Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jay Mehta here from Mumbai and this is a continuation video of the video series which we have on the journey of an embryo inside an IVF laboratory. See in our previous videos we finished all the critical timelines. We finished the 2 pn stage, we finished the 4 cell stage which is called as the day 2, we finished the 8 cell stage which is the day 3 and today we are going to talk of the final stage of embryo development which is permissible inside an IVF laboratory for a human embryo. This is the stage of blastocyst embryo. Till the last time we knew that when we are talking of day 3 embryos, those are the embryos in whom we can count the number of cells. I'll probably try and show you an example as I speak. So if we can have the lights off, we will be able to see these embryos which are on the day 3. So see, this is something which is like a day 3 embryo, right? In the day 3 embryo, we can count the number of cells, okay? And quite a lot of IVF laboratories still do embryo freezing when the embryo is on the third day or eight cell stage. There is nothing which is right or wrong. However, in this particular embryo, as you can see now, here you cannot count the number of cells. See this? If you look at the timeline, this is an embryo which is cultured up to 119 hours, practically 120 hours. And what you can see here is that you can see the embryo looks to be surprisingly different as against the previous embryo. Now this is something which is called as a blastocyst embryo. If you see here, this part of the embryo is called as the ICM or the inner cell mass and all the surrounding aspects, the cells are called as the outer cells or the trophectoderm cells. Now it is this embryo which also has a water filled cavity. You can see the cavity here. I can also show you one more embryo which is similar in nature. See this? You also have a cavity which is developing inside and you have an inner cell mass of the same patient. Okay. So these are the embryos which are called as fifth day embryos or blastocyst embryos because they have a cavity inside them. Now, if we try to study what are the advantage of doing a blastocyst embryo culture? The advantage of doing a blastocyst embryo culture, if we try and understand, is that remember a blastocyst embryo. If we say, if we have a three day three embryos, which are good. So if we have three day three eight cell embryos, which are good, it is equivalent to having a single good blastocyst embryo. A good blastocyst embryo, mind you, is going to have an implantation of approximately 40%. That's the highest implantation which can be achieved on a blastocyst embryo. At our setup, we do exclusive blastocyst culture for patients. And this helps us in achieving a consistent success rate of approximately 30% across all age group of patients. Once again, I want to remind everyone and repeatedly inform that by doing time-lapse imaging or by doing embryo culture till blastocyst, you do not guarantee a 100% success rate in IVF. IVF is a procedure where the approximate success rate is going to be approximately 35% and as the age of the female partner increases, the success rate will decrease. There is no denying this fact. No denying this fact. The very reason why we allow the embryos to grow till blastocyst is because quite a lot of times in the process of growing till blastocyst some embryos do get arrested that means they stop growing further that is just how natural selection is okay that is just how the theory of natural selection is nothing can be done about it but if you have a blastocyst embryo that means that embryo has withstood the phase of day three to day five there is something called the morula phase it has withstood that phase that means Technically and practically, if you consider, blastocyst embryo is a slightly better grade of embryo as against the third day embryo. Then the obvious question will come, why don't we transfer two blastocyst embryos? So it will make the success rate as 40% plus 40% and it will give an 80% success rate. That can be a question. Remember, something like that never happens. The success rate of multiple blastocyst embryo transfers does not enhance so much. Let's say if I put a single blastocyst embryo and the success rate is 35%, if I put two, it will go to probably 40%, at max 45%. What this time lapse helps us in doing is in selecting 
which out of this blastocyst embryos is actually a good embryo. We need to choose the embryo. We need to tell the patient that you formed two embryos. So if we look at this patient, again, we can have the lights to be off. So if we look at this patient as such, see this patient has had total of four oocytes. Number one, this is arrested. Number two, this did not fertilize. Number three, this has become a blastocyst. Number four, this has also become a blastocyst. So now in order for us to tell this to the patient that, okay, I have four, out of these four, I'm going to select number three as the first embryo for you and number four as the second embryo for you. This analysis is given to us when we are doing time-lapse imaging. That is the advantage of putting it inside the time-lapse system. It is going to give you a beautiful picture of how the embryo actually grows. And once you have an idea of how the embryo actually grows, you will be able to communicate that to your patient much more better. And that is the advantage of doing time-lapse imaging. So with this, we will finish our series on the journey of an embryo inside the laboratory. There can be a lot of questions which people might wish to ask. You can post your questions and me or one of my team members will answer as quickly as we can. Thank you so much for enjoying this series.